Welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. And this unit is focused on programming and software development. We're going to look at describing programming organization techniques and logic. We're going to look at different types of programming languages and list the advantages and disadvantages of each type. We're going to describe some of the main features of application code and differentiate it from object-oriented programming. And we're going to describe the ways that an application can be deployed. Software developers use a process called software development in which they utilize a programming language to write a code. Now that code is a sequence of commands that are carried out. Programs are not very tolerant of ambiguity. Everything has to be very precise when you're writing uh, in code. Punctuation, uh, capitalization, all that information matters to it. Inside the program we also have to clearly define what is input and what is processing and how the program is going to output its results. We can think of a program, uh, writing a program as a flow of a sequence of events. It's frequently represented with a flow chart. In this slide we have a very uh, basic type of uh, computer programming and you can see clearly at the top it says start and the different types of boxes and diamonds mean different things. A diamond means decision and basically the, the square is an action that's being performed. Many programmers also utilize the idea of writing in pseudocode. So pseudocode means we're writing in plain English, easy to understand language, what is happening at each step of the program without worrying about the precise details of what the command and code is going to look like. This allows the programmer to focus on the logic of the program rather than the minute detail of how the instruction is written. There's a number of features that programming code contains regardless of the language. And they are subroutines, returns of branches and loops, conditional statements, variables, functions, user interface, and comments. After you have developed your logic for the program, you then need to choose a programming language to develop the application. Some of the things to consider when you're choosing a programming language are going to be what type of program you are writing, how experienced are you as a programmer, and what types of devices your users will be uh, using the software that you develop. The programming language provides the exact syntax for you to use for your code. Uh, for example, the character used for a comment or the way conditional statements are written out varies from language to language. There are many programming languages to choose from. They all have different applications and you should match your choice of programming language with the software that you're looking to develop. Some of the more common ones that we see are Java, Python, JavaScript, C++, PHP, Ruby, Swift, uh, Java for mobile devices. When you choose your language, it's going to be either a compiled language or an interpreted language. With a compiled language, the code becomes uh, has to be transported, transformed into an executable binary code before it can run. The compiling process is the process of converting the code to binary. The Compiled languages are very quick, but they're platform specific. And by platform, we're referring to the type of CPU that's being used. So if you want to develop a software application for Windows, and you also want it to work on, say, a mobile device, you have to recompile it for that specific platform. Some examples of this are going to be the C languages, COBOL, Pascal. Now the advantage to it is these are very fast languages when they run. An interpreted language does not need to be compiled to run. In fact, it runs in the context of something called an interpreter. And the code is converted into machine code when it's run. That means the program runs a little slower 
but also means you likely can run the program on almost any platform. So there's advantages and disadvantages to each. Some examples of interpreted languages are going to be Java, JavaScript, Perl, and Python. Query language is what is used with a database. It's usually designated as structured query language, commonly referred to as SQL. Assembly language shows machine code in human readable text. For those of you going into cybersecurity, we frequently take the code of a um, virus or malware and we reverse engineer it and we get assembly language, even though it might have been written in a different language to begin with. And then we have our markup languages that are really uh, mostly web languages such as HTML and XML. There's some common, common identifiers in programming. And an identifier is going to be something that stores values in the program. The two most common are variables and constants. So variables are going to be a container or an identifier that va the value can change while the program is executing. Uh, usually, you take a variable and you have to declare it as a particular data type. And then we have constants. And a constant is a value that does not change while the program is being executed. We have another type of identifier known as a container. Now, a container is going to hold multiple elements. So the two most common types of these are arrays and vectors. And you can think of a two-dimensional array, uh, array really as a table. So it's going to have rows and columns. An array, the size of the array has to be defined when it's created and it doesn't change. A vector is an array that can grow or shrink in size as it is being used in the program. Branches and loops are common to all programming language. So a branch, the classic example of that is an if-then statement. If this happens, then do this. So if it's more than 75 degrees in the house, then run the air conditioner. If it's lower than 65 degrees, then run the heater. And loops are for repeating a block of code based on a condition. And we have two types. We have for, next, and do while. And it has to do with where the statement is evaluated, at the beginning of the loop or at the end. So, for example, you might say, I, I want to carry out this code five times. So you make a loop and you tell the computer to, while the counter number is less than five, to carry out this action. And after it completes it, then go on to the next line of code. Of course, to make loops and if-then statements work, we have to have some comparison operators. So two equal signs is equal to. So we don't. if we want to say something is equal to, we use two equal signs, not one. And we have an exclamation in front of an equal sign. That means it's not equal to less than, greater than, less than, or equal to, or greater than, or equal to are the other ones. And then we have three logical app, uh, operators. And means if all the conditions are true, then everything, then the whole statement is true. And or means if one condition is true, then the whole statement is true. And this one may be new to some of you, the X or, the X or operator states that if either condition is true, but not both, then the whole statement is true. So procedures are, and function are designed to give you blocks of code to be reused. A procedure um, doesn't return a value, but a function does. And then inside code, we have comments. And comments are human readable uh, language that's meant to document what is going on in the code. Comments are very important to use, especially when you have multiple people working in the same code. Or even if you wrote some code two years ago, when you come back to it, having comments in there to help you remember what happened and why this or what this section of code is doing is important. Each language has a little different um, syntax on how you document comments, but all programming languages support it. Object-oriented uh, programming is a way of designing code with the idea that each object, each th 
thing in your code is an object and that these things interact through defined methods. Uh, an object is going to have an attribute, methods, and properties. So attributes are values and data types. So for example, if you had a box, an attribute might be the size length of the side. Methods define what the object can do. So can the box move? Can it not move? Can we rotate it? Maybe it can transform somehow. Properties give external um, code the ability to ask the object for an attribute or to change one of the values in the object. There are two types of scripting languages interpreted scripting general purpose languages such as JavaScript and Perl, and scripting languages that are used for OS automation. Scripts are generally considered a smaller program, and we use them on our operating systems to perform repetitive tasks. Uh, in Windows, we can create something called a batch file, which you'll see here uh, in the notepad. Or we can use Windows PowerShell, which gives us a few more features like loops and branching. Inside of Linux and the Mac OS, we can create bash scripted files. And Windows also supports a Visual Basic scripting language. When we're creating software applications, we have to understand or know ahead of time what kind of platform it's going to run on. If we create a application to run on a single platform, it'll only run on one particular OS. So we could create something that only runs on Windows. Cross-platform software is designed to run on multiple operating systems or platforms. So we could design something to run both in uh, Windows and Mac Creative Cloud suite of programs is a great example of that. And now we can have web applications that run in a browser. The advantage to that is that it is OS agnostic or doesn't matter what type of operating system is on the, pro on the uh, computer because it's running through a browser. We have to determine how we're going to deliver the application to the computer or user. Is it going to run locally on the local machine? So executes on the local hardware, stores data locally, doesn't need network connection. Is it going to be a network installation where you have to have a server serve up uh, the code and the data is stored there, but it requires a network connection? Or could it be, uh, or is it going to be a cloud hosted where it executes in the cloud? You have to have an internet connection and the data is also stored in the cloud. So we looked at programming, organization techniques, and logic. We categorized the different types of programming language. And did we described some of the main features of application code and object-oriented programming. And we finished up by describing the ways in which an application can be deployed.